Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I want to talk about a tone mapping process that you can do in Adobe Camera Raw. And it sounds odd, but Adobe Camera Raw is very powerful. One of the things that you can do here is kind of a quasi tone mapping. It's not tone mapping in the sense that you're using a tone mapping software to make an HDR image, but you are affecting the tones in very selective ways. I showed this on HDR Insider on a recent tutorial and it was really successful, so I wanted to show it to you here as well. And here is the before and here's the after. And this is all done in Adobe Camera Raw and there is no tone mapping done to this image at all as far as traditional methods like photomatics or something like that. This is all done in Adobe Camera Raw. All right, so here we are in Adobe Camera Raw, and we're going to go ahead and talk about this uh, tone mapping in Adobe Camera Raw, but there's some little things that we need to fix here before we can go ahead and do that. The first one is going to be right here, this little guy. Um, no soliciting, no uh, trespassing. Yeah, I wasn't on their sidewalk. I was in the street, so <laughs> I really wasn't too worried about that. But, you know, we can always get rid of that sign by just going right here to spot removal and looking at the size of that spot and just kind of clicking right here and then that's going to ask us where we want to pull it from we can just slightly come in here and just move it up until we get exactly all of those lines matched up so that looks good all right no more sign all right the next thing we need to do is fix the proportions of the geometry in the photograph so we can go to lens corrections go to manual up here in, in this top bar you've got profile color and manual and then click the A for upright and that will do a really good job of getting you a nice upright base image to start with. So now we can go ahead and go in and start getting the base layer for our photograph and typically what we do with the tone mapping when we do a, uh, a single image in Adobe Camera Raw and a lot of people don't consider it tone mapping but if you think about what it is that you're doing you're controlling highlights and shadows so essentially you are mapping your tones to a degree now you're not using tone mapping software like HDR software but you are adjusting the tone to an extent that it could be considered as such so we'll go ahead and just go ahead and give us a little more temperature here make this a little bit warmer before we start and then we'll go into the exposure we'll look at the exposure and see where we are on the exposure want to increase or decrease that exposure I think I'm just gonna move it up just a little bit maybe a little bit less there we go 0.15 contrast we'll just go ahead and boost that a little bit because that's gonna help us with the HDR process with the highlights we can just go ahead and bring those all the way down with the shadows we can bring those all the way up and that will help us get a good baseline for what it is that we're gonna be working with here in the near future with the whites and the blacks, I'm going to go ahead and leave those alone, and I may come back and address those in the future, but right now I'll just leave those alone. Now the clarity, clarity typically is going to help us get that HDR look. It's going to give us the the, the detail that we like, that micro contrast detail that we like in our HDR photographs, but I'll just bring that up to about plus 55, and then with vibrance, we can bring that up to get a little bit more color in this photo before we start. So that's pretty good. Um, before and after it definitely looks better but if we go into the adjustment brush this is where we get to be painters of the uh, of the tone mapping and this is actually a lot of fun so first of all before we start off I'm just gonna go ahead and press the plus on the clarity because that's gonna be one of my main kickers for this effect make sure that auto mask is selected make sure that overlay and mask are selected and then if I click on the mask overlay color I'm gonna make sure that I'm selected on magenta now you can use many other colors for your mask color but I prefer magenta because the way magenta works is there's not a lot of colors in a, in a typical photograph where you're gonna see magenta so if you use magenta as your mask you'll know that you're not really uh, you'll be able to see it you definitely be able to see it so we'll go ahead and paint that on you can definitely see magenta now if you were to choose a different color like red uh, there could be some red in the photo if you choose green uh, that is kind of a vibrant green but by default I'm not sure what they have it set up because I've had it set at magenta for so long but I would highly suggest making that something like magenta we're just gonna go ahead and paint along here I'm not gonna get that green in there I just really want to get the um, the uh, sidewalk in there now if I do select too much I can just press the left bracket key to make my brush smaller press alt or option and just paint away the area that I don't want to be affected and that would definitely be this little green guy right here just alt or option click that off 
and then I'm back to selecting. So I want to make sure I get a good selection of all that stuff down there. Okay, so that's that's a good selection. You can see that the mask is there. So if I unclick the mask, now the mask is going to be gone. The only thing that's been done to this photo is it a clarity increase of plus 25. Now in the adjustment brush or the graduated filter, this is not a very strong effect. The clarity isn't doesn't work necessarily as fast as it does in uh, the main module for uh, your base processing in Adobe Camera Raw. So we go ahead and increase that a little bit, just bring that up, bring the clarity, we'll just bring the clarity all up, and then I'll go ahead and address these issues up here and work my way down. I don't need to really worry about temperature or tint at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with that. But let's go to exposure, let's see what happens when we bring the exposure up a little bit, bring it down a little bit, and I'm going to go down just a slight bit on the exposure increase the contrast a little bit. You see how we're starting to get an HDR look? It's almost like we're tone mapping this area selectively. So then let me look at the highlights. I can go ahead and bring those highlights down. The shadows, I'll bring those up and then I'll just start to bring them down. And that looks about right. Now, if I want to double this effect, I really want to drive this home, I can press Control and Alt on the brush and just move it up slightly and then click off of there and I've got two of the exact same brush. Now the masks might be slightly different because I moved it up just a slight bit. But if you press Control and Alt, you can go ahead and make a duplicate copy of that. But make sure you move them a little bit away from each other, not too far apart, because if you move them too far apart, it's going to change where the mask placement is on the photograph. I learned this the hard way in, in, a, in a recording of this the first time around. All right. So if you look at this though, we just doubled exactly what we did with the first brush. Now things might be a little different. We can actually increase the highlights at this point and still get a nice uh, HDR look, but increase the highlights on one of the brush, decrease the highlights on the other brush, and it gives us a little bit more contrast between those areas to really give us a nice grungy, almost HDR look to this area that was not tone mapped traditionally like we we're normally used to. So then if I go ahead and let me look at the mask on this one real quick and then look at the mask on this one real quick. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with those. So now we can go ahead and make another one. So we'll just make a new one and we'll go ahead and paint that new one right here where the bricks are. So I'm just going to make a pretty big brush and just paint on these bricks. Now by default, it's going to have all the settings from your previous brush. So if you're happy with that previous brush, you can leave those settings alone. Or before you go in, you can make sure that those settings aren't there. Now, if I go and make sure that I press on that mask and make sure I get all the brick in there because I really want that brick to be affected, make my brush a little bit smaller, press Alter Option to get rid of it on the area that I've already tone mapped down there. All right, pretty good. Go ahead and make sure I get all these areas on the brick, even those little white areas, and just have fun. That's pretty good. I'll, I'll be good with that one. Let's take that mask off and let's go ahead and look at what we can do with this. So let's bring the exposure down a little bit to make that darker. Let's bring the highlights up and then let's bring the shadows up a little bit. No, let's keep those shadows down, way down, and we'll keep those highlights up. I like the way that looks up. And then here we can actually make this a little bit warmer and add a little bit of warmth to our background color there. So that looks actually pretty good. Here's a little before and after. Again, same thing here. If I want to duplicate this, I just click on it, press Control and Option, and move it down, or Control and Alt, or Command and Option. I just did a little Mac PC confusion for you there. If you press the mask icon there, you can see that the masks are relatively the same because they are relatively close to each other. So now we can click on that other one and see if we need to do anything with this one. So it looks like the shadows might be a little bit too dark here. So we'll, we'll drop those shadows a little bit. We'll drop the contrast down a little bit. Maybe increase the highlights still because I really like how the white is coming through on that brick. And then maybe increase the exposure just a little bit on that one. Maybe drop the exposure down a little bit. It's a little, working a little too fast on me there. And then we'll even knock down the clarity just a slight bit. So here's our before and after from just our adjustment brushes. You can see how we get a nice little HDR looking effect on our photograph pretty quickly and easily. And it's almost like we're painting with the tone mapping. It's like we're, we're painting in those areas. It's, it's pretty interesting how you, can, how you can do that. So let's go back to the base. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Alter Option on my blacks. 
make sure I do have a black point somewhere in this photograph. And when you press Alter Option there, and you see some areas of color coming through as you move that to the left, that's showing you areas that are coming in as pure black. It's a good idea to have a good pure black point. It's also a good idea to have a pure white point. So let's see what happens when we bring this up until we find a pure white point. So if we bring it up to find pure white, it, it doesn't look too bad here. We do have an area of pure white now and an area of pure black. But I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. And then we can even take this a step further, go into our color and address the color. So if the reds, let's see these reds are a little too red here. We can go ahead and move the hue over for the color red so that it turns a little bit more orange, like a nice orange red brick. Same thing with the oranges. If we move them over to the red side, then you're going to see that those bricks basically turn red. But if we move that over to the yellow side, we get that nice orangish yellow looking brick. And we can do the same thing with the yellows here. If we wanted to address the greens also, because there's some green in the door, we can make that green a little bit more green to kind of make it punch out a little bit more. Same thing with saturation. We can increase the saturation a little bit in just the color green. And we can do that with the yellows as well if we wanted to, or even the reds. I don't think we need to worry about that too much, but let's go into luminance of the color red, drop that down, make that a little bit darker, so we get a nice deep darkness in our color red. So here is our overall before, and here's our overall after. So we get a much nicer HDR look to our photograph without actually tone mapping it. This is a single exposure. The Zero EV just brought right into Adobe Camera Raw. And it just goes to show you that some images don't necessarily need to be tone mapped in order to get a nice HDR photograph. And I say tone mapped in the sense of a traditional HDR method like Photomatix or uh, HDR Effects Pro. So again, I'm Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. If you like this tutorial, please go ahead and share, like it, and uh, we'll get the uh, education here spread because if, if you learn something from this, there might be somebody else out there that learned something from it too. Thank you. Have a good one.